I've been talking about this for many years. I've been in this work since 1994. Previous to that, I was an entrepreneur, operated my own, my own business. And I had, before doing my own business, had created jobs for myself in a lot of different sectors. I cleaned houses. I cut hair. I made jewelry. I sewed. I did a lot of things. I created a job for myself while I was employed with somebody else and brought in extra income. Low-income people understand the difference between starting a business and just making a few extra dollars. And creating your own job is where lots of people start. In our community, we see them making tamales at their, in their kitchen. Legal? No. Good? Yes. And they sell them. They go out and they uh, buy a bunch of camiseta, camisas. You put them in the trunk, they go park somewhere, open the trunk, and they sell them. They find a place to push a cart in front of a store, and the owner says, sure, you can sit there. And they produce something, a raspada, a soda, a little antojito, which is like a little munchy treat. And they create a job for themselves. Some of those people are brave, and they like that little extra money, and they turn that idea into a business. And this is where we come in, or sometimes don't come in, unfortunately. But they turn that into a business, and they make an effort to navigate the system as they've encountered it and see it, and sometimes they seek help, and sometimes they don't. Because they are risk takers. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. They join the mainstream business community, sure, sometimes, and sometimes not. But our goal at LEBC is to help them join the mainstream business community because we know that that connection outside of their own social network is critically important. And some of our most successful businesses have in a big way joined that mainstream business community. And they created jobs, they purchased the buildings they manufacture their product in, they buy lots of equipment, and they grow their businesses, and they find themselves operating on a daily basis inside of the mainstream business community. But not all. Immigrants as entrepreneurs. I was asked to talk a little bit about the, the average traits of, entre of immigrant entrepreneurs. I, I don't think it's an average. You know, we, we can talk about some of these things. Immigrants as risk takers. They are risk takers. They came to a new country. They left everything behind in many cases with themselves or with their young wife or with their young wife and their young children. And they replanted themselves and reinvented their lives here in a foreign country, where they sometimes do not speak the language frequently, where they don't understand the rules of, and, and the regulations of how to operate, and they have taken that tremendous risk. And interestingly enough, entrepreneurs have that same trait. It's right up, right up on top of that list. An entrepreneurial person is somebody who's willing to take a risk. So immigrant entrepreneurs sometimes are doubly invested in that trait, but sometimes they're just scared and they're willing to take the risk. Immigrants are accustomed to working hard. We know that. We see that. Everybody talks about it. Uh, you know, you talk to anyone out there, they go, yeah, those ones in but they are hard workers. They have an amazing work ethic. They have a an amazing work ethic because their stomach speaks to them. They have to work hard. What's offered to them in the way of work frequently is hard work. And when you don't make a lot of money an hour doing the work that's offered to you, you may work longer hours in order to feed yourself and your family. And interestingly enough, entrepreneurs understand that their commitment of time has to be beyond the pale, over the, over the top, extra hours, extra time, dedication, where we read it all the time. So entrepreneurs and immigrants, again, share that similar trait. Immigrants are visionary. What? Visionary? Yeah. The future looks bright to them. They can imagine their lives in this country, 
and they can imagine the opportunities that they see, and they can imagine themselves participating and partaking in those opportunities. And the future is bright. They can work. They can have housing. They can go to the grocery store. All the things that we take for granted, an immigrant comes here and is fairly happy with what they see and the opportunities. It isn't always great. We heard in the other session about housing and how housing is not so great. And there's segregation. And all those factors are very true. But immigrants, in general, see the future as bright when they come here. And that is another trait that entrepreneurs have. They are positive thinkers. They are optimistic. They see ahead of what is right there in front of them. Immigrants are prepared to sacrifice. They have already sacrificed by coming here. They know how to pinch a penny. They, they know that their work today may not generate what the projections that somebody told them they should expect in terms of sales and income, but they have faith and they believe that if they keep at it and continue to push that stone uphill, eventually things will get better if they sacrifice. In interviews with entrepreneurs that I have frequently, this word comes up a lot. They are amenable to sacrifice. They understand that that's part of getting a business started. Interestingly enough, another trait that entrepreneurs possess. They are willing to make the commitment to a business. They are willing to invest their own money. They are willing to live on less. They are willing to make commitments to repay loans. They are willing to sacrifice in order to build their business. Immigrants know that they have a lot to learn. Eh, maybe here, entrepreneurs not so. Maybe entrepreneurs in this area generally tend to be a little bit more egotistical, and they can conquer the world, and that's a wonderful thing. But immigrants come here, and they know that they have a lot to learn. And so we have discovered, Jaime and I, that they seek us out, because they know that we have information. And so it's very important that those kinds of resources are available to entrepreneurs that are bringing all this natural talent and ability. They just need a little help. They just need to learn a little bit more about certain things in certain areas. And the best thing is, they know it. Find the match and light the fire, strategies that work. You know, when I first started in this industry back in 1994, I had been an entrepreneur and had my own business for about 10 years. And I was called back into the nonprofit sector to share what I had learned and to help uh, develop micro-entrepreneurs. It was a, a, a workforce training program, if you will, that utilized the concepts of starting your own business or creating entrepreneurs for people that were underemployed and had enough. And my uh, executive director at that time, he, he, was, he was quite a, a flamboyant guy, and, and he wrote great grants. And, and I remember that the first grant that I saw that he wrote when I was looking at it to see what I was supposed to be doing, it had this phrase called the fire within. That he believed that entrepreneurs have a fire within, a burning desire within. Now, we weren't talking about immigrant entrepreneurs because I started working with entrepreneurs that were very low income, that were a, di a diverse racial group of women and men and of all nationalities. Most of them, what they had in common was being low income. But he believed 